It turns out Tony does occasionally make useful contributions. Uh, give me a sec. Okay. What's up? What can I say except you're welcome? Another magical mystery box. And to think, I used to design sentient future tech. Let's do this. Ha <laughs> ha, nothing's gonna stop me now. Do your thing. Well, Where in the hell are you, Blaze? This is definitely the coziest war room I've ever been in. Quiet, too. Great. Now we're making progress, people. There you are, Hunter. Please join me when you have a moment. I insist. What do you think of Logan? It's good to have him here again. He's always been a trusted friend. Well, at least there is one person in this abbey you trust. 
Ah, you must be referring to me keeping you in the dark about Blaze holding the parchment of power. I am. And you think that means I don't trust you? Withholding that kind of information from me does give that impression. I see how you could take it that way. Logan kept a secret for Agatha and I, and it saved our lives. It must have been, what, 1985? 84? I remember because Agatha crimped her hair and shoulder pads had cast some strange spell over my wardrobe. We looked quite ridiculous, but we were... happy. Well, happy until a rather disturbed coven of witches by the name of the Salem Seven invaded our home. Did your enchanted shoulder pads at least offer you some protection? Oh, I wish. <sighs> Funny I can laugh about it now. At the time, it was so tragic. See, the Salem Seven were Agatha's grandchildren by her son, Nicholas Scratch. They tried to kidnap their grandmother? They felt she had betrayed which kind by choosing to live among humans and came to drag her back to New Salem by force. Logan was staying with us when they invaded our home. He hid us in a secret passage, and refused to tell them where we were. He kept our secret, and fought them off long enough for Agatha to invoke a banishing spell. Without him, they would have surely kidnapped her. Or maybe worse. And I thought my issues with my mother were bad. Oh, yes. Indeed. It seems like most of us here have... dysfunctional relationships with our families, at best. I am beginning to think it may be a prerequisite for becoming a hero. Speaking of dysfunctional dynamics... I do trust you, you know. Even though I don't always show it. I know. Even though you don't always show it? Something like that. Common ground? Who would have thought? Where in the hell are you, Blaze? Just because there is talk of a slime monster lurking beneath Manhattan does not mean... Oh, it does. Look, I know Eddie and Venom. They're not what you'd call unsore losers. And we did, you know, kind of bury them under an old bell tower. Has anyone seen the creature since? Long gone by the time S.H.I.E.L.D. showed up. They go to ground when you wound their pride. In this case, underground. Venom on the loose. Licking his wounds. Now that's a friendly neighborhood problem. So, how about we go solve it? Do you have a question? <sighs> you gotta work on your social cues. hold a grudge. I wouldn't say worried. I've come to expect it. Do you still think this is a good idea? Yeah. Eddie tries to be a savior, but sometimes he needs to be saved from himself. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? He could eat one of us. Our slime monster.
Vampire. Ah, uh, vampires. Maybe it's the Downtown Express? Sounds like a layer. Sounds like... for dinner, I guess, for the side of vamp over easy. Not so easy for the vamp. Oh, gross, Eddie! It's hard to know who to root for in these parasite versus parasite situations. Parasite! A demonically possessed symbiote? With a vampire's bloodlust. Not good. Come on, Eddie, don't do this! They are definitely doing this. <laughs> Rest. Go again! Find a new line of work. train you for this, huh? This is low even for you, Eddie! Moping in the sewers, scarfing down the undead. I met more on a personal or even spiritual level, you know? We know your blood! He has not lost his way with words.
told me to mention your mother. Apparently, she's promiscuous. Something. I never thought I'd miss being chased across the city, but this. Now the smell is even worse down here. He's not eating roses. <laughs> These are her best. You were too weak for this fight. Your mother abandoned. My resolve. I appreciate your attempts to talk him down. I would settle for a knockout. I'm not sure which is tougher, but we'll get to him either way. I'm on. Nice. Let's do this. It's just. 
just me now. Oh, just what I need. your strength. Just a scratch. This is for you. Nothing personal, but I think you're out of your league here. Tingling. Oh, it's just a sprain. So that's how you wound up in the history books. And how do I get out of this? Once again, the lift servants fall. I think that's gonna leave a mark. a match for us. You don't have to tell me twice. Return to your mother.
see not much has changed among the world's fanatics. You are unprepared. From every poor! Don't lose it, pal. Either of you. He is lost. One mercy remains. Ah, yes. The elimination of one tormented soul for the good of many. Humans do love a moral dilemma. The umami of an otherwise flavorless existence. Mephisto. Gesundheit. Uh, nice mullet. Go to hell. There's nowhere I would rather be. But I've come on business. So let's make a deal. Is this one of those fiddle at the crossroads scenarios, or...? No deal. My terms are as follows. I spare venom. I cure the symbiote of Lilith's demonic touch. I end the blood fever he's given himself, gorging on curdled vampire bile. I wretched little thinking of it. I said, no deal. All this, and I ask but one inconsequential thing in return. Stop the vampire uprising. The undead are bad for business. So, you cure Eddie, and we keep doing what we've been doing? Yes. Wipe them out. Remove every trace of their foul scourge from the Earth. Then, I will cure this pathetic creature. Forever. For the last time, no... Hold up. Give me the fine print. Nothing much. The usual. If you should fail, you'll discover something far more threatening than the undead, namely yours truly, etc., etc., immortal soul, yada yada. This is a bad idea. This or he dies? We don't have much of a choice. I'm in. Good. Just sign there and there. You may feel a little steep. We should follow. You do have a vampire war to wage. Oh, and Peter, I'll see you around. How did he know my... Huh. Of all the surprises we've had so far, that was one of the weirdest. So, uh, that's a truce then, right, Eddie? We feel like ourselves again. Weaker, but ourselves. We will spare you. For now. Hey, that's progress. He didn't threaten to eat you. That is progress. I love <laughs> Much appreciated.
you think? I never wanted that. I was trying to keep you from eating my meals. Following us. Stopping us. Leaving us on The advantage is mine. Vampires have little sense of self-preservation. Even facing this... Hydra follows proper concussion protocols. Coming at you! I saw a move like that once, centuries ago. For the rest of us. Ha! Huh. I think that's the last of them. And not a moment too soon. Something like that. So, you okay, Eddie? Blood! <laughs> it's kidding, little joke. Uh, no, I, I come in peace. For once. Really? 
New kids gotta get in on this, too? Hey, by the way, you're killing it out there. Respect. Thank you. Not my first vampire war. Eddie, are you... yourself again? Well, you mean, are we... ourselves? Yeah, Lilith. She made us a monster. We did awful things. You know that's not who we are, right? Of course. So I'm sitting here. Well, in there, and thinking. <clears throat> I saw what you did for me. So, how about we put aside all our, uh, you know, personal stuff? Okay. No, not forever. Just, just until this whole messed up vampire situation is figured out. Till all the innocent people are safe. I mean, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Works for me. Shake on it. Oh, <laughs> wait a sec. Put her there, partner. I'm there, partner. Welcome to the Midnight Suns. I don't think Eddie will fit in the Hellride's backseat, or the front for that matter. Ooh, when he's Venom, does he squish down? I, I got lots of truck space. Ready for shop class? I am ready. Right on. Good instincts, but you want to tighten up the array. Uh, like this? Close. Here, I can show you. Uh, what's all the, uh, new equipment? Ah, the supplies? No need to thank me. Donated to the cause, courtesy of five Stark subsidiaries. Wow, that's... it's really something. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but just take what you need. I'll clear out the rest, I promise. Awesome. That's great. Did you know Tony planned to do this? No. Did you? Nope. Maybe he can tell us what's going on. How's it going, boss? Ready to get your hands greasy? Tony, why did you bring all this equipment? Really? The old stuff has a junkyard horked up in an 80s machine shop vibe. Why, were we supposed to vote on it? The supplies are helpful, but we could have used a warning. Yeah, I should have sent a message to your Sparks. My bad. I'll call a mulligan on this one. What is a mulligan? It's a... I'm gonna say it's a type of, uh, carburetor. Good to know. So, about this situation, I get it. We're bumping elbows. But you kids are doing good work here. Whatever you want to do, I'll support it. I spoke with Tony about the equipment. He says he wanted to support shop class. That's all? He did not lie, but I am uncertain he told the whole truth. Hmm. Uh, good to know. Look, you came here to make something. Don't keep Parker waiting. I guess I'll keep an eye on Tony. Make sure he doesn't do any crazy rich people stuff. Like what? We don't want to find a champagne waterfall in the break room, you know? Actually, that would be tight.
Glad you cleared that up with Tony. Now we can get to work. We don't have much on this Sabertooth guy, but we know he's incredibly dangerous. He's also somewhat predictable. In what way? When it comes to a fight, he's extremely aggressive. Our ideas take advantage of that. What have you cooked up? The initial prototype uses a tailored pheromone to keep him away. It provokes an intense revulsion we hope will blunt his attacks. Like a foul scent used to keep animals at bay? Well put. Our other prototype is... Well, we kept it simple. It's part sedative and part itching powder. To trip him up with a thorn in his paw. A very distracting thorn at that. I have the components you gave me. Always good to get ahead. You ready to put this one to bed? I am ready. Well, that went... not poorly. And that's a decent prototype. Just needs refinement before you bring it to market. You plan to sell it? It's only an expression. Although... nope, stopping right there. Catch you at the next one, boss. Is that it for today? I am ready to go. That is good work. Well done. Uh, thanks. After what he has endured, we should be sensitive to Eddie's needs. You guys really put the home in home base. This is an impressive setup. I hope the accommodations are better than what my mother provided. Eh, your mother gave me a lot of stuff, but most of it was grief. Uh, thanks again for what you did for me. As if my past wasn't complicated enough, your mother added a fresh pile of regrets. Eddie, you are here because a mutual friend believes in you. Uh, you mean he believes I'm trouble? And he's not entirely wrong. I do not want you at each other's throats. Look, Parker and I have... a complicated history. But it's water under the bridge. Oh, well, I guess we're still building that bridge. But we have bigger fish to fry. From... the... Yeah, bridge. But enough about us. Can you trust me after everything that happened? I mean... I kept trying to eat you. I cannot blame you for everything my mother made you do, but your past gives me pause. Well, don't worry about me. I'll be on model behavior. I hate to waste a get-out-of-jail-free card. So, now that we've cleared the air, I'm a little worried about the deal we made with the devil. That's the first time I've meant it literally. I agree with you, but Peter made his decision. Our plan was to stop the new breed vampires. Now we can do so with your help. Maybe. I can't shake the feeling that he traded the devil we know for the devil we... Well, for another devil we know. Why are there so many devils? If the world ends, we shall never know. I'm glad you sound confident. The symbiote and I are on the fence. No offense, but I hear there's a gym here, and I'm itching to check it out. I'm gonna do that, unless you need something else? I would like to get to know you better. 
Okay, hit me. I would like to know more about you. Really? Like what? What was your life like before you became Venom? I was a reporter, and I was pretty good at it. Well, I was okay. Somewhere between okay and pretty good. Had a few wins. Then one major gaffe blew up my whole career. What happened? <laughs> uh, it's a long story. And not my favorite one to tell. Maybe I'll share the details someday. All you need to know is that it nearly ended my career. I still find the occasional reporting gig, but... Well, let's just say it's for news sites with stories about how the government buries alien bodies in the desert. Do they? Oh, yeah. Just not the kind of aliens these sites talk about. What drives you to fight for justice? Plenty of people will tell you I'm no hero. Some of them might be living in the Abbey. But I really do care about doing what's right. And I guess you could say I had a tough childhood. Always wished I'd had a strong friend who could save me from the monsters in my life. So I became a monster. To save those too small to fight for themselves. Yeah, they might be afraid of me, but... I'll keep them safe. You seem ruthless for a hero. Is that a question? Half the Midnight Suns believe the greater good can sometimes outweigh a single life, but none of them... well... Eat their enemies? <laughs> you could put it that way. Eh, my brand of justice is an acquired taste. I would like to know more about your symbiote. Naturally. Go for it. How did you and the symbiote connect with one another? I got bitten by a radioactive pool of motor oil. What? <laughs> uh, nah, that would have been less traumatic. Truth is, Spider-Man brought the symbiote back from space. Space? <laughs> Be surprised what that kid gets up to. Anyway, Parker found the suit ill-fitting. His loss was my gain. Maybe I'll tell you the story someday. What are your capabilities on the battlefield? Now, without your mom's demonic protein powder, we can still bench press a bus if we need to. We also have limited shape-shifting abilities. Our tendrils are handy when we need to grab something or web someone to a wall. Uh, oh! And we can also camouflage ourselves, if needed. Don't tell Parker, but he traded down when he went back to those red and blue pajamas. I notice that you sometimes refer to yourself as we. Why is that? Because I'm a king in black. What does that mean? It doesn't matter. Truth is, Venom isn't a singular personality. It's a combination of myself and the symbiote. That's why we say we. It must be strange to have a conversation with the voice inside your head. Yeah, well, if you thought it was hard fighting vampires, try doing it when your costume is yelling in your ear. Eddie, can I talk to Venom now? Uh, that's not how it works. I'm not deranged. I just share a body with an alien symbiote. And okay, yeah, that does sound deranged. But it also happens to be true. You want to talk to Venom? You always are, Hunter. Actually, I have to run. I'm around if you need me. I hope you know what you're doing bringing Venom here.